Donnybrook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS. Thanks for joining us for another edition of Donnybrook. Great to have you with us. Lots to talk about, so we'll skip the pleasantries and get right to the introductions. Starting with Sarah Fenske, the executive editor of Euclid Media, sitting in for Wendy, who's taking the week off. Bill McClellan from STLToday.com, Ray Hartman from Substack, and St. Louis Insider, his column you'll find there. And the man who edits the news and writes a great sports column for the St. Louis American, Alvin Reed. And before we begin, I know, Bill, you were a big admirer of Tom Hall, the great musician who uh, tragically died this week. Yes, he did. I, he was w one of those musicians who saved Soulard, you know, back in the 70s and 80s when uh, musicians gathered in Soulard and lived in Coldwater Flats, and uh, Tom was a member of the Geyer Street Sheiks, was like the Soulard Blues Band, another band there, and uh, Tom died, uh, was found after a fire, you know, I, I'm thinking that uh, he probably had a heart attack or a stroke or something, because he died at like 9 o'clock in a fire, and uh, Tom was a, was a night owl, and yeah. So, uh, you know, vaguely mysterious without being sinister. And there's a benefit for Tom's family at Squires from 5 to 7 on Friday night. And they were a great band. They really were. They were a great, great and, well and, said. And they Tom were really a good band. Terrific guitar good, player and a really yeah. nice guy. For sure. Well, thanks for those kind words. Sure. And uh, absolutely a fundraiser for his family at Squires. And, of course, our thoughts and prayers with the uh, family and fans of Tom Hall. I want to ask you, Sarah, what would you make of today's action in the uh, 22nd Judicial Courtroom of Judge Michael Noble, who was there with three representatives, somewhat, of the Circuit Attorney's Office, actually two representatives and one attorney, Michael Downey, representing the Circuit Attorney herself, although Kim Gardner was not in this room. What was the genesis of this? Well, on April 10th, an attorney from the Circuit, Attor Circuit Attorney's Office failed to show up for uh, a hearing involving a defendant who was accused of shooting an 11 year old girl and so that was continued until the 24th and the circ the attorney again failed to show up and so now today Noble is continuing the case where both the circuit attorney and her assistant Chris Deslitz are both up on contempt of court charges that's right and he said the judge feels that there is enough evidence to support a finding of criminal contempt of court which can even result in jail time um, if lawyers do this I don't think it is going to result in that in this case that would obviously be a really bad look for the St. Louis circuit to have the circuit attorney behind bars but Judge Noble made it very clear in this hearing that he is absolutely fed up uh, he had a great quote, which a, a rudderless ship of chaos, I might have that slightly wrong, but the, the meaning there, um, he was basically saying, Kim Gardner, it's your job to make sure that staff attorneys aren't overloaded, that they don't have case lists of a of hundred different murders that they have to be prosecuting at once, and you've done nothing to solve this, you've done nothing to remedy this. I think he's really eager to get her attention. It and frankly, I think she messed up by not being in there in person today and apologizing. I think it was a huge strategic error. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, I, you know, we've had a lot of conversations about Kim Gardner. She's got income and coming from all over. This is a bigger, I think it's a much bigger problem in the sense this is the court. Mm -hmm. This is a contempt of court proceeding. There are those, I know we were talking before, what does this mean? You don't think uh, some of the other stuff's political? No, I do think a lot of the stuff that I've said was political is still political in Jefferson City, but this isn't political, and this is a real problem for her, I think. Well, this this is, you know, clearly uh, somebody has to go speak to Ms. Gardner, the mayor and uh, black ministers, maybe some business people, and say that you have to resign because the office can't keep up with things as they are now, and the idea that they're going to be uh, somehow able to produce all the discovery material and prepare for the trial in September, it's ludicrous to expect it. So uh, Ms. Gardner has to 
be convinced that it, it's time to leave. But what did you think when Chris Desolate said, well, it happens all the time. I'm an attorney. I couldn't be at 9 o'clock in the courtroom in the 22nd Judicial Circuit when I also have another case that's down the hall in the 10th. Does he, he, said, he says, I've been in this business for 20 years. That happens all the time. I don't, I, well, maybe it does, but it just seems to be happening a lot here. Now, that, <laughs> now that's just a bad answer. That's, and that, I think that goes to who do you report to? Will my, will my boss be mad at me if I say something like that, especially to the press? Yes, which is why, you know, you got to come up with something better than that. And, I, and as Judge Noble said, he said, why didn't you call us? Why didn't you say you couldn't make this work? Like, there wasn't even a heads up on this. And meanwhile, you have the families of murder victims waiting, thinking finally they're going to get their day in court. You have the defendant waiting in jail, you know, saying that he's innocent, waiting for his life to go on. Uh, you know, you should at least have the courtesy of saying, oh, I yeah, yeah, it's a, ter it's a terrible excuse, Charlie, to say that, oh, we're often in two places at once. I can't be. I mean, no, you, the, the, you schedule things. But he seems to be in indicating to Judge Noble, don't kid yourself, this happens all the time. We've known each other for 20 years. Yeah, but I'm just it saying that this is, this is like the kid who just d might a student and doesn't do his homework and my dog ate it. I mean, it's just, that's just silliness. Okay, yeah. all right. Well, about this? Charles. When Michael Downey, who was there representing yeah. Kim Gardner, not the office, he wanted to make sure that she'd be entitled to discovery. Wasn't that rich? After all, that's what the Supreme Court dinged her on when it came to the Greitens case, and Messenger and others have written column after column about how she denies discovering evidence to those who are accused well, but, but of crimes. Wait, your defense attorney is supposed to defend you. We've had this discussion right. before. Like, right. I don't yeah, care what right. they do oh. trying to get me off. I mean, that's, that's, that's his job. I can't yeah. be mad at him for doing his job. One other thing about doing the job, I think if we go back to I don't care where they're coming from, there are bright attorneys out there who would work for whatever the day wage was to help her out in that office and refusal to bring in help I think is is a real part of the problem here over the last two three months because they're just simply overwhelmed too many people have quit and if that many people have quit you've got to have bodies there and if people are willing to come down there and at least you know do the like discovery or just the opening preliminary parts of trials, then you've got to bring them in. I don't care if they're Republican, it, Democrat, uh, you know, whatever. I, just, know, I, I mean, this or, the, I, how about uh, attorneys general from the state, from Jefferson City? <laughs> but, bring oh. them in. It almost feels uh, no, like this uh, ship yeah, has so sailed, to extend the sailing metaphor that, that Judge Noble was using. At this point, things are so mixed up here. These are not cases where you can just grab the file right. and be ready to go in a day. I right. mean, it's going to take months to yeah. fix this. And in defense of this assistant circuit attorney who was supposed to be in two places at once, I, I understand he didn't make a great impression in court today, but I have true sympathy for these people. They're, they're handling, in some cases, hundreds right. of felony cases, and they can get disbarred if they don't pursue them ethically. It's a nightmare there is. Right, and, and the court has always worked in the past, Charlie. I mean, the circuit attorney's office gets an attorney when, where they're supposed to be there, and the idea that, well, you can't expect us to be there, that, that's a poor excuse. And, and let's be clear about something. I think she will be gone in months, if not maybe weeks. I, I do think... Well, we can't, we can't go months. Well, we okay, okay well, whatever. But the point is, I, th I don't have any inside information, but I think there's a real probability that she's not going to be here. And I think it's important, a couple things. There are a lot of things that points you've made, a lot of points that are very valid about competence. But let's not... I don't think it would be time for a victory lap for the people that try to victimize Eric Greitens because he was not a victim. That, I mean, that's, and, and, that's, that's definitely No, that's I'm so saying, long let's ago, not Ray. have... But that's I'm just saying that there's going to be that, and there's also the, the more important thing no, no. is I hope it's a locally... No. that The successor is not uh, uh, appointed the, by an insurrectionist like oh. Andrew Bailey. Well, the, the only point I was trying to make about uh, Greitens is that his attorneys with Dowd right. Bennett were asking for all sorts I of evidence. I got that, I got she that. She didn't hand it over. But, but, but and, and, that, was, and that's what she's in trouble for now, I get among it. other things. I get it. But well, do you think uh, her was no assistant victim. circuit attorney, Alex Polta, is correct that she is going to be in jail by the end of no, May? No, no. She's not going to be in jail. But I think that, that she... I do think she's going to leave. I, I, again, with no insight, particularly, but I, I would, it's just too much piling yep. on, as Bill yes. said. But, but I don't think it's time. I think it is important that we get, a, even in an acting capacity, a circuit attorney who is not, you know, basically carrying out the MAGA agenda, well, you know? Well, so. Ray, 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 <laughs> we ain't got MAGA no agenda. We, we need to. We, we, no, need, we, need we need the criminal process. justice system right. to be working exactly. in St. Louis. Exactly. Get, now, and, what, one interesting right. thing is 
you know, people say that Mike Parson will get to nominate the circuit attorney, yes, and you know, I'm not sure. Because, That's what I'm talking you know, about. In, in, yeah. in 1988, when uh, Bill Clay wanted a black person on the board of VNA, Vince Shamel got Paul Bear to resign as comptroller and named Vervis Jones to replace him. But in 1992, when George Peach resigned, Governor Ashcroft made that appointment. So, you know, right. uh, Richard Swatek, who lost to D. Joyce Hayes. So there's precedent on both sides about who gets to make the appointment. And Very we talked about the job swap at the time. Can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we hey, did. Let's move on to uh, topic number two for this week, and that will be the state of the city delivered by Mayor Tashara Jones of the great city of St. Louis. And uh, she brought up some familiar themes. She's backing the LGBT community in this controversial time. She's also standing for a woman's right uh, right to abortion, which is now illegal in the uh, state of Missouri. Uh, and also, Alvin, she talked about the city medium security workhouse, which she closed and now is looking for suggestions uh, from the population. What, what should people do with that workhouse? Overall, what was your... Uh, takeaway from the mayor's state of the city. Well, um, I, I will say quick condolence because one of the first mayoral speeches I ever attended was from a lucid and very bright young man when I was an intern in Cincinnati. Rest in peace, Jerry Springer. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. That's true. Oh, uh, um, I didn't I even know he passed away. Yes. Did he yeah. pass away? Today? Oh, yeah. wow. Uh, so, I, first of all, I thought it was, I thought it was a very good <laughs> speech. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if it would be like I've got, you know, the, the, the tiger by the tail and all that, but I thought it was very uh, measured, to steal your word from earlier, I'm sorry, <laughs> and tempered, but I thought that she laid out, you know, what she said she was going to do, what she had done, and then how we're going to keep progressing, and I don't mean that in a progressive way. Mm. I thought she set the stage for, once again, what she's saying, if we can all work together, we can start working out some of these problems. So I, I thought it was uh, well prepared. I thought it was well delivered. And I mean, I have, I have confidence that uh, some, some good things will continue. So as the sole city resident here mm -hmm. at this table, yeah. I believe, um, <laughs> I thought it was hopeful to hear her talking about some of the things she's talking about. I think city residents right now would like to see some of the basics getting taken care of. You know, we want our trash picked up. We want our potholes filled. And she's making a good case that things like getting rid of the typewriter-based system that they have used and bringing in computers, simple things like this that are actually really hard and complicated to take on, that this is going to have a big payoff, and we really need that big payoff. So I'm hopeful. Well, you I know a thing or two about writing speeches, but uh, this was not, unlike the ones I wrote, this was a terrific speech. <laughs> um, it was, and, and but I, what caught me, and maybe it's not, it's, I think it's worth looking online at the mayor's office to, to see it, is there was a lot of insight into her personally that I hadn't known. I mean, because she's been out there a long time as treasurer. She talked in particular, and, and not just, fluff, but I mean, she talked about, for example, having worked as a TWA uh, employee answering the phones or whatever, or complaints, and how that kind of prepared her for, you know, in an analogous form for, to what she's doing as mayor, and I thought that was really strong stuff that I hadn't seen, mm -hmm. and I agree, I, I think she's got a tough job, and I, I'm not always going to be on her side and everything, but I think that really, it really was hopeful, and it was also a very human eye, it was a very got kind of a personal, kind of compelling personal speech. Well, I think it's the job's going to be tougher than ever because she, she's got the Kroenke money, which is not going to last forever. She had the COVID money, which is not going to last forever. And, you know, 40% of the city's budget comes from the earnings tax, and that's on the city residents. And the residential population is down. It keeps going lower. And from what we understand, there are fewer people working in the city because that's all American cities now because of remote work. I think the next couple of years are going to be really difficult. Well, I didn't, de I, I didn't <laughs> deny that. I mean, I'm just saying that. I mean, you've got to start somewhere, and I think building off what happened over the last year, um, you know, is, is, is a good thing. Statistically, like I say, as you said, w with the acceptance of car theft, you know, the crime numbers are down. Homicides uh, are way down. Yeah, right. you know, and they are. I mean, you could say I think tomorrow could be a different story. Right. Yeah, okay, but right but now, now, it's, now Sarah brings up the trash. You know, that's what residents <laughs> and workers. She I says she's the only person who lives in the city. Although you know, the rest of us have worked in the city for 30, 40 years. But nonetheless, I guess that counts for nothing, Sarah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I just, you know, I feel sometimes you guys are a little down on the city, and as a city resident. Um, 
Th those of us who live here, we are rooting so hard for this place. And hey, well, we're, 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 we are too, Sarah. Yeah. I live half a block outside. Hey. <laughs> and and, and I'm rooting saying. hard yeah. for it. And, and the mayor's job, you know, cities are like people. Their lives have momentum. Yeah. Yeah. And, and our momentum has been downhill for 50, 70 but, but, years. But, but, and, and the mayor's doing her best to... Stop that. But, 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 but uh, Sarah is right. I mean, it's the best of times, it's the worst times, because you go to some neighborhoods, like you go to a Tower Grove and the Farmer's Market, and you're yeah. like, this is the best place in the world. You, can, you can't beat it. But in O'Fallon Park, Andy Banker of Fox 2 took a look at block after block after block of trash. And in fact, some of the trash is so bad that they can't even get uh, trucks down the alleys. Now, apparently the forestry division of the city was taking care of that today, thanks to Andy's reporting, yeah. I guess. But where's the $70,000 a year alderman, uh, Laura Keyes? I mean, shouldn't she be on top of this like... Uh, I don't know, white on rice or whatever you say? So I certainly think the voice of the alderman is important in bringing attention to these things. However, I think St. Louis is moving away from this system of aldermen phoning in complaints that they just spend their whole time driving around going, oh, I see the trash isn't picked up. Let me call City Hall. And City Hall only cares when it's coming from them. That's not a practical way to run government. What we need is a competent bureaucracy that can be out there administering these programs. And what we need is aldermen who are capable of coming up with good policies. And I think there's a lot of talk on the board that this is the direction that they want to go. And that many of this new crop that has been elected on this newly shrunken board, that they understand that they have to be more than just the neighborhood stabilization officer. We have people in the role of neighborhood stabilization officer, and that's not what we elect people to do. I, I agree completely, and it's not because I don't even work for you anymore. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I will I feel free to disagree, but I, I completely agree. And as far as the $70,000, our mm -hmm. ultimate thing. L look, that's their salary. It is not. We've we've done it. There to keep refer to refer to them to that. I know it's new, but this isn't some cushy overpaid job they have. I mean, and it's. I I, I agree it's not with like Sarah. Like columnists, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, seriously, I'll it's work not. In a newspaper. It's, it's, yeah. Yeah. it's they went from very low. Okay, fair, but, but, fair, but, fair, fair enough. It's but not about when that. You, when, you, but, no, when you do make seventy thousand, you should be accountable. And when, I do like. Jo what's the guy who lost no, his uh, Joe job? Joe Vaccaro. Joe Vaccaro used to get on a pickup truck yeah. and pick up the trash. But, and I was out. And, 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 and the citizens did not reelect him. Well, no, they didn't. But I was out there with Annie Schweitzer on the first of April, and she was one alderman picking up the trash, literally on Pennsylvania and on Alabama, okay, and that's, I like that. That's fine, but you don't know that Laura Keys doesn't do that, and... Well, she, she wasn't on top of this one. Well, okay, but I mean, that, that well, doesn't... She just got that's, sworn she in. She just got sworn in, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. it's 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 very unfair <laughs> to her. Okay. I mean, she hasn't even found her Forget parking her. spot. Well, she is the incumbent. She, um, I get it. Oh, yeah, she's been I'm, around, just, but, I'm just but, saying yeah. that it's, it was... On. I'm sure the trash was there on election day, but... That's, I, once again, it's a new okay. administration. It was good journalism okay. by Shalanda Andy Banker, Webb. by the way. Shalanda okay. Webb, All right. county council chair, and I will be picking up trash on okay. May the 5th. Uh, uh, at Parker Road in 367, and everyone on this table is invited to join us. See, and, we don't and, need and, and aldermen to the, do this. We need Charlie yeah, to do this. Exactly. I like no, this hello, system. Okay. Uh, let's see. Who else is... Uh, we got to go to you, uh, Bill. And I want to ask you about a $500,000 plan by the Board of Estimate and Apportionment in the city of St. Louis to have license compliance. You know, there's a lot of expired tags out there, uh, people driving around with temporary tags that were supposed to have expired in 2021 one or earlier so uh, what do you think a half a million dollars to start enforcing this well I uh, it might make a great sense but I, I don't understand it at all it seems to me if you want to uh, get compliance on people not having current tags you tell the police department start stopping people and giving them tickets for this I, I don't understand how you spend five hundred thousand dollars for a company to to do it I mean because that's Law enforcement has to do that, as far as I know. Isn't our, our law enforcement, though, pretty busy already? Well, well, they, they are, but, but I, well, how is a private company, consultants, going to come up for $500,000 with a plan to do this? Well, I, I, would I don't do, get it. Why not do what they do in New York? And that is, if you've got a car, it's parked on the street, or even in a Walmart parking lot, and they look at the license plate and there are tickets that are overdue or the plates are expired, they put a boot on it. And then 
You get the 800 number, you call up, you give them your credit card, they'll give you a code to get the boot off, and you got 24 hours to return it somewhere. So are they spending 500, first of all, first I heard it's like $500,000 for a compliance officer, that's a pretty, that, 70,000 didn't bother me for the all, that, that seems a little high, I might apply myself. No, uh, even if it means moving to the city, no, um, which I happen to love. The, um, uh, from I, I don't mean to step on the toes of Reed McClellan or, you know, but Trust but me, we're working how, on this. Right, <laughs> I, you need to get a bid in on this one. Because if they're, I, I couldn't quite understand, sorry, if they're just, if I hope they're not spending a half a million for a study on how to do this. No, 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 I think it would be like a consultant where it, their job would be to administer it? this program, I mean, much like how I, we have private people it, doing our, they, our parking violations. Did they bid it out? I mean, that's the question I have. It seems like a lot of money for that. I, I agree with you that it, it, the police are busy enough with higher priorities that it's the concept right. of an outside group. I just think maybe we need to know I, more I about think what is the that outside group? What, what, I don't how, know. How do you do this? I mean, so I they're like, what, what's, maybe what's we should have thinking? Well, maybe we should have figured that out before. I'm not sure I can answer that for I guess you, we should have figured that out before the show. You put a boot on the, the car, I, and the person can't operate the car until well, they're I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about that. I don't that. think so, but no. I think it would be a bit, not a bad it, idea. It might, it might be to figure out if we should do that. Not the whole five, but maybe how much would it cost to invest in at any given time 200 boots? And it might be <laughs> to go from there. I think, you know, also, I, I think maybe they can do the how can you say the computerized thing and start matching up addresses to out of state or out of state out of date plates and see who might just have an outstanding warrant on top of it and you know kind of start weeding out problems more than just you know the expired tags I something like okay. that and i like okay. the fact that there's some I, I think the more focus we can start seeing in a city on traffic and on these kinds of issues that seem like peripheral things, they really add up. I think it's, I an, important, it's an important priority. Alvin, really. what do you think about uh, Al, uh, Adam Wainwright responding to some of the, the, I guess, negative comments that he was hearing or reading on Twitter? And uh, at first, uh, he responded, and then he got a backlash, but then the love poured in from Cardinal Nation. Yeah, well, first, Sarah, if you're in the right place on the railroad tracks in Kirkwood, I can see the arch, so I feel like I'm pretty close to St. Louis. All right. Um, uh, all these excuses. Yeah, yeah, I know. Remember the scene in Airplane where Kareem Abdul-Jabbar grabs the little boy? And it's just like, you know, I've been listening to that garbage yeah. since I was at UCLA. <laughs> Tell your old man to run up and down the court with Lanier yeah. and walk for 48 minutes. Exactly. I think since you can't do that anymore, Twitter is not the place to go to vent your frustration with fans. You get an outpouring of support, yeah, but at the same time, you just bring more vitriol upon yourself. He comes back and gives up five runs and two innings in his first, and then, then the naysayers will have 1,000 comments. So just, you know, hey, you know, it is what it is and let it go. I mean, people are so vicious on social media. I don't blame him for responding. I know that, you know, you're the bigger person if you don't respond, but it's like everybody's got an opinion, and I'm sure he's thinking, these people can't even walk from their couch to the refrigerator, and they're trying to tell me how to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be so frustrating. Well, these people don't even live in the city of St. Louis. Uh, yeah. I was, well, most Cardinal yeah, fans yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, was, I was actually surprised. I know a lot of athletes do it, but particularly because he's a little older than some of these, you know, an older generation in sports. I was just surprised he did it, and I, I certainly don't begrudge the Cardinal fans. I mean, hmm. he's got a great legacy here. I, I, I really think he'd be better off rise. I mean, he can do whatever yeah. he wants, but I was, I was mostly just surprised that yeah. somebody of his stature would engage them, and I, I, I just don't see why. I, I think the fans probably love it. The fact that maybe. they, he's reading comments, yeah. you know, yeah, that Adam Wainwright cares what they think. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't have thought he would. I, I wouldn't either. Okay, That's no. a good point. Let me ask uh, Sarah, the only panelist to live in the city of St. Louis. I'm never going to live in this town, am I? Yeah. I never. What did you think? <laughs> the International Photography Hall of Fame, based in the Arts District Grand Center, where we are right now, has decided to move to Fenton uh, about the same time that the Speaker Series, which has been at Powell Hall for years and years, will now be at the factory in Chesterfield because of renovations to Powell Hall. Mm -hmm. Who knows if it'll return? What do you think? I think it's 
unfortunate. I think we need these kind of things to bring people like you all into the city. <laughs> um, you know, having an attraction like the International Photography Hall of Fame, this should have been a draw. And the fact that now they're going to just having an office, is my understanding, in Fenton as opposed to a tourist attraction, it's a shame. You know, it always kind of felt like an underutilized resource. I don't know that they figured out how to bring in people to see some of these shows, but they had some pretty big deal photographers showing there. I think it's just another loss to the city, yet another reason that we need all the help and support we can get. And speaking from here in the city, um, I um, <laughs> I agree, and I think Grand, the, the Art Grand Center, the Grand Arts District, uh, particularly with what the Kranzberg Foundation, the Kranzbergs have done just unbelievable stuff. I, you know, and I don't know any of the details. I, don't, I assume Patty went to you, still the director of the... I think so. Uh, and, you know, she's... I don't know. I don't. I, I always thought about. it was I, weird that we had a international photography hall of fame. Why? Right down the street. Oh. I mean, I, I did. I thought, we'll we'll discuss wrong? that we're, next week. We're, we're, okay, we got. We're, okay. we're out of time, right. unfortunately. Right. Hey, let's see what the folks had to say about last week's program, which I enjoyed very much. I listened on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you. I saw Andrew Bailey laughing with delight the day opposition to his tactics by the St. Louis media died. That from Tim King of. Benton, Missouri, as a suggestion, add more Donnie Brookers to the Donnie Bash stage. I'm suggesting those who have repeatedly sat in on Donnie Brook, like St. Louis residents Sarah Fenske and Joe Holloman, at a minimum, bash it up. That from Frank Medica of Maryville. Dave Rao wrote, why so dismissive of Dave Mueller's candidacy for district attorney because he is not black? Are you saying black voters in the St. Louis version of progressives will only vote for a black candidate? Thank you, Dave. You can write us care of 9 PBS 3655 Olive Street 63108. Don't forget those emails at Donnybrook at 9pbs.org and those tweets at hashtag DonnybrookSTL. The nine line at 314-512-9094. And listen to us on your favorite podcast source, like I did last week, as I said, Spotify, TuneIn, Google Play, and Apple. Join us for the next Donny Bash. It's the 15th of June. That's how you can get our tickets. Thanks so much to Sarah Fenske for sitting in for Wendy, who will be back next week at this time. Don't go away. On next up, a discussion on hiring the incarcerated, the formerly incarcerated, that is. Ray and Bill will be your hosts. Donnie Brook is made possible by the support of the Betsy and Thomas Patterson Foundation and the members of 9PBS.